my element. Well, instead of uh, being at CES where, you know, you get to see new technology, we decided to come over here to the Pinball Hall of Fame, which is out at 3330 East Tropicana in the middle of nowhere, Las Vegas, and ran into Tim Arnold, who's uh, one of the biggest pinball machine collectors in the world, if not the number one guy, who started this thing. And this is like a non-profit? Yeah, we're a non-profit uh, pinball collectors club. We pay the rent here, we pay the light bill, and anything that's left over after that, we donate to local charities. And you, all the machines are set up to be played. And you, how many machines are at this location? There's 200 pinball machines and classic video games here. And they're all available for you to play. This isn't a look at it museum. This is an actual play it museum. Now, and you have a lot of, I mean, most of these, oh, these are all collector's items. I, yeah. More or less. And then they go back, what's the, what's the genres typically you have, like from what I can tell, and we'll walk around in a minute. It's unbelievable, by the way. Uh, you have pretty much everything from the 30s to the modern crazy machines, and you have some one of a kind. Yeah, we have uh, a few games from the 30s and 40s, uh, a few from the 50s, quite a few from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and we even have some of the new games that, that they're still building today. Uh, a total variety, and we also have some unique one-off games, prototypes, unproduced machines uh, that you can only play here. Now, it, you, have you noticed that any change in the types of people playing? And the reason I'm asking this is because we were actually talking about this earlier. My son, who's at Evergreen College, they've been having they're, they're, there's been pinball arcades cropping up that have these older machines or, or, or classic style machines, and. 20 something seem to be playing them. Are you, are you seeing any generational thing that's a, of sociological interest? Do you think? We're seeing, yeah, we're seeing a lot more kids coming in, but the problem isn't that people don't want to play pinball. The problem is there's no pinball left to play. There used to be pinballs in every gas station, bar, 7 Eleven, and all this, those are all gone now. If it wasn't for little pinball joints like this popping up all over the place, there'd be no pinball at all. Mm -hmm. So you want to show us. Uh, why don't you show us a couple of your favorite machines in the store here? Okay. Okay, so we're at, uh, he's taking this, just take us over to the baseball machines, and they've got a lot of really interesting baseball machines. And anybody hasn't played one of these things, these are not like a traditional pinball machine. You actually are a baseball player, you have to hit a ball and, and then strike one of these little things in the targets and stuff. Targets. And it's tremendously simple because you only have two buttons pitch and bat. But it's real maddening the amount of skill that's involved because you have to aim the ball to avoid the out targets and you want it to go up the ramp for the home run. So you've got to feel the ball as it comes down and just time it perfectly to get it up the ramp. Simple but intriguing. Now it's a little more complicated with this one as I recall. This one has right. different kinds of pitches. Right. You can throw a fastball which is right up the middle. A curved ball, there's a magnet that breaks the ball to the outside. And then the knuckler, which is the one I like, breaks the ball to the inside, which gives you a microsecond of control. You can let the ball roll down the bat and pick your area a little more accurately if you throw knucklers. All right, well, let's, now let's go take a look at some other machines. Okay. This one's Orbiter 1. This actually has a curved playing surface. So the ball actually goes zooming around and spinning. It's spinning and absolutely unpredictable. It is the weirdest sensation. It goes behind the flippers and it comes back out. And eventually you do lose it down here. But again, this is a game they only make 800 for this machine. It's almost player impossible to find. And for 25 cents, you can play it here at the Pinball Hall of Fame. Right down the hole. Totally weird. Okay, actually, I, this was, uh, you know, you guys got written up in Southwest Magazine. It just came out this week, right? Right, right. And this machine was, was featured, and they said apparently they only made two ever. They made two. Yeah, and this is one of them. This one of the two. This is the one that they managed to finish. The other one is partially finished and not playable. So this is actually the only one you can play. 
and you got to understand that they've sunk almost a million dollars in engineering into making the two samples and then for whatever reason decided to flush all that money down the drain and not build it. And the only place you can see or play this game is here at the Pinball Hall of Fame. What's weird about it is because it's got a four level play field. You got the main play field here, you got the second play field that's six inches higher, another one up here on the right, and then the final evil clown play field where you enter to the evil clown's head. And connecting the the uh, different play fields are a series of mechanical ramps. So it's very intricate, great, fun playing game. When did Midway, this is a Midway machine, they don't make machines anymore, right? Are they out no, of business? No, there's only one company left making pinballs uh, in Chicago, they're called Stern. They're turning out about two to three pinballs a year, different models, and that's it. How many, what was that, what's, what's the total sales, like 10,000 or so? They're right around 5,000 per model. They're, they're kind of teetering on the edge because they're just not enough locations, enough places to put pinball machines anymore. Uh, back in the day, there used to be a uh, shot and beer joint on every street corner. There used to be a neighborhood bar. All those have been taken over by chain bars, and they don't have pinballs in them. So there goes a lot of your locations there. 7-Elevens, you don't have pinballs in there anymore. All the arcades have closed up. It's really tough. That's why I think it's a great idea that people make little museums like this that keep pinball alive. What, what's the total size of your collection? I have about a thousand machines. Two hundred of them are here and available for play. Great. Well, this is what I like to do in Las Vegas, so see you guys later.